Evening and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 7th of April 2022, uh, which is the last one of the municipal year, and congratulations for everyone for making it. Apologies for absence, there are none. We'll move on to the minutes of the previous meeting. Is it your wish I sign those as a true record? Moved by Councillor Summers, seconded by Councillor Pritchard. Uh, so all those in favour? Thank you very much. Consider those as a signed record. Uh, decorations of interest? I do not believe we have any. So we'll move straight on to item four on the agenda, which is question time. And this is to answer questions from the public uh, in pursuant of Executive Procedure Rule number 13. This evening we have a question from Mr Loxton. Would you like to come up and ask your question, Mr Loxton? Thank you. So the question is, will a leader of the council commit to ensuring the public toilets in the castle pleasure grounds are open every day throughout the year from Easter 2022 onwards and that when the summer opening hours come to an end, any winter hours do not include any days when the toilets are closed completely and instead are open for a minimum of six hours daily. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr Loxton. The castle grounds toilets were closed in line with government uh, restrictions during the pandemic. Uh, and then we reopened at reduced hours to accommodate the ex uh, extra cleaning regime uh, that was applied to them. The final restrictions regarding the pandemic were lifted on the 1st of April, and the toilet opening hours will increase the summer opening hours from the 8th of April, which is tomorrow, uh, to cover the Easter holidays, uh, as we have done in previous years prior to the pan pandemic. Uh, in response to your further question about winter opening, we'll continue to monitor usage uh, but in general terms, we find the reduced opening hours uh, during the weekdays uh, of the dark months meets the current demand. However, we will continue to monitor that uh, and respond to that accordingly. Do you have a supplementary? When the cast grounds toilets were refurbished in 2019, including the uh, town's first changing places facility, it was promised that the seasonal hours would be done away with the council's own press release, which was entitled Major Refurbishment of Castle Ground Toilets to start next week, said it was to provide longer opening hours all year round. Accessed all day, every day. And I quote, instead of seasonal opening hours, the new toilets will be open all day, every day, and at all times of the year. Rather than fixed opening hours, the cubicles will be remotely controllable to ensure availability meets demand, including opening into the evening hours. Spent a lot of money on this facility and it's not being used the way it should be. I've recently been at the Cathedral to Castle Run and the Tamworth 10K, and if the toilets could be actively opened remotely, why weren't they? Why did we result in people having to clamber through the window of the Changing Places facility to ensure that someone could actually use the toilet I believe that the residents of Tamworth would like them open all the time. I believe I can easily get a thousand signatures, which would mean you would have to debate it at full council. So I would ask you to put it onto your, your future work plan that you have. Commit to discussing it as 30 councillors at a council meeting before the summer opening hours end, and then come back to us with a decision from that. And, it, and that, that is taken in public so you discuss it in public so we can see it thank you okay so um could you clarify which one of those questions you'd like me to answer i'd like you to clarify whether you will discuss it at a council meeting before the summer hours coming into an end so you'll debate it um as a full council because to me you've you've lied you've simply lied you've said that it's going to be open it's not so that to me that's a lie i'm sorry Okay, so um, so in answer to your question, the way policy works is through the budget and the policy framework, and all councillors are engaged in building that policy framework, and that comes to full council in the February of each year. Uh, outside that policy framework, we do have some latitude to change things uh, as, as and when we require. In terms of the, uh, the specifics around the toilet, we are committed to increasing the provision of toilet facilities. 
we have had some significant problems with the toilets in the castle grounds due to vandalism and misuse uh, and as a result to protect that asset we have often changed the way uh, we operate that i'm sorry you don't have a come back at this point uh, we, we've changed the way we deal with it our commitment to deliver and what was said at the time will have to change based on circumstances unfortunately we've had to close them during the pandemic Unfortunately, we have to close them due to vandalism uh, and misuse and have to get them repaired. These are all... Sorry, Mr Loxton, no. You've, you've asked your question, you've had your supplementary. But, no. But it's a... It's a Mr Loxton, you've asked your question, I'm answering one of the multiple questions you asked in your supplementary. But what you say... Let me just... No, no Mr Loxton, you've made your point. You, I allowed you to continue to make your point despite... It should only be restricted to a question. I've given you quite a bit of space on this matter. I'm sorry you cannot come back in. We are committed to increasing the provision of toilets. We are committed to doing the right thing where we can. And we are committed to get over the issues that we have to. In terms of all councillors being involved in the policy framework, that happens and that will feed back in February next year. Thank you, Mr Loxton. That concludes question time, so we'll move on to item five, which is matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. Councillor Dan Maycock. Thank you, Chair. Um, basically, this uh, recommendation has uh, been before Cabinet before on the 17th of February uh, and was taken away to the Reset and Recovery Board, I think it was, uh, where we got a reply uh, from that board, which I gave to the Health and Wellbeing Committee. Uh, some of the members were a bit disappointed about the reply. Um, uh, and basically they wanted me to bring the recommendation back and just explain a little bit more about what the, the recommendation was about. Uh, we didn't feel that the Assembly Rooms was offering a place for private conversations with residents um, and that's why we asked for a, a location with that facility uh, to be looked at. Uh, speaking with yourself and the deputy leader it seems that the there is booking still going ahead for private facilities uh, and i just think if that's the case it just needs to be voiced a little bit a little bit more or a little bit better so residents of the town can can see that that is still happening thank you okay thank you councillor maycock uh any questions or comments from cabinet before i respond Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. I think it, it's just important to, to reiterate that the Council's commitment to, to you know, ensuring residents have a, a safe and adequate place in order to talk to staff and raise their issues in, in private. So, you know, happy to take feedback, you know, if we, we need to do some, uh, should we say, awareness on that with, with the public and the, the people who need that, that private facility. But even throughout the pandemic, that is something we've still maintained where, you know, people do have to have a, a private conversation on a sensitive matter with Council officers. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? So, yeah, echo the thoughts of, of Councillor Pritchard that that facility uh, for a private one-to-one -one is, is available. Uh, obviously, in terms of a, a first point of contact, uh, that's a little bit different to having a, a private discussion uh, and, a, and a booking can, can be made uh, under, the, under the current setup. Um, what I will say is uh, I have recently uh, authorised or approved, for want of a better phrase, uh, improved signage to the front of this building uh, to, to signpost uh, to the different routes uh, to get in touch with the council and face to face. Uh, in terms of the recommendation itself, I would suggest that Cabinet uh, take on the recommendation, however, take it on in the form of Agenda Item 13, Recommendation 3, which the second part 
<laughs> delegates authority to the Deputy Chief Exec in conjunction with the portfolio holder for risk and customer services to keep the current situation under review and where necessary agree to revise the customer services and reception arrangements should evidence or customer engagement change. Uh, so I believe that would satisfy your recommendation in terms of reviewing it because what that will do is put a, a function in that that uh, that the current situation is reviewed on a regular basis and reviewed on, on evidence rather than uh, rather than scrutiny having to go away and make a recommendation again and, and trigger a review but they will actually cover that uh, in all of those um, so I suggest uh, that I, I, I think I'll move that cabinet uh, that cabinet responds to this recommendation with reference to agenda item 13 recommendation 3 part 2 do I have a seconder Councillor Bailey has seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Councilor you. Michael. Thank you, Cabinet. Thank you. Okay. So, agenda item six is the adoption of the Staffordshire Voluntary Community and Social Enterprise Pledge. Councillor Summers. Thank you very much. <coughs> so, some good news. Um, as we are all aware, um, over the pandemic, especially the uh, third sector has come into its own, um, voluntary sector and third sector has come into its own and, and given a lot of help to the residents of Tamworth. Um, we're going to be relying on them ever more so in the future. And so the uh, adoption of the Staffordshire Voluntary Community and Social Enterprise Pledge um, is uh, our way of um, looking to uh, formalise and strengthen our um, links with the voluntary sector um, it's uh, the signing of it is intended to be a public commitment to the council's ongoing work in collaboration with the local voluntary community and social enterprise sector and it focuses on the borough council's commitments towards our local sector organizations um, we have Gary Jones from Support Staffordshire, who's uh, our first signatory I think um, between us so um, we are uh, looking to um, consider and adopt the, the VCSE pledge, uh, promote and implement the VCSE pledge and delegate authority mys to myself <laughs> or the portfolio holder, um, whoever that may be in future, um, to review the pledge annually in conjunction with the Assistant Director of Partnerships. I don't know whether you want to say anything on it, Joe, at all. No, just to say that that's the support of that pledge and I think um, Gary and, and, and um, Claire work strongly across Tamworth with our anchor organisation so this is the, that first step in that honouring and, and actually a public commitment to that pledge and I don't know whether Gary you wanted just to say anything at all on, on that at the moment just that's okay chair thank you no uh, really welcome the opportunity for the that public recognition and statement um i think the relationship working with Tamworth borough council and the voluntary sector has only grown stronger and stronger over the last couple of years and sort of look forward to I embedding that uh, even further you know in, in in all in all aspects um of what the borough council does and what the sector does within the local community okay thank you any questions or comments from cabinet members Okay, uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, that we value the, uh, uh, the the community and voluntary sector, uh, and I think that relationship we've had between the borough council uh, and the voluntary sector over the last 22 years that I'm aware of uh, has uh, has sometimes been strained and sometimes been very, very positive. But I think uh, getting to a position where we are today, where we we're, we're signing that pledge, I think is a is a statement of intent. Uh, and, and, and a positive thing to, to do. So, uh, Councillor Summers, have you proposed that? Yes, I'd like to move those recommendations, Chair. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Doyle has seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. I will now sign said piece of paper at an appropriate time. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Gary and Claire. Uh, you're free to leave if you want to. Okay, item seven on the agenda is the Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's uh, a, the community, Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan. It's a three-year rolling plan. It uh, outlines how partners are going to uh, collectively tackle 
safety issues in the borough. Uh, the 2022 refresh it highlights what's been achieved against the outcomes set in the previous year and outlines priorities moving forwards um, in the community safety strategic assessment. Um, so uh, this has also uh, been looked at by scrutiny uh, and one of the recommendations that I'll, uh, I'll read out in full um, is that we, we do uh, delegate the interim refreshes to uh, scrutiny to look at and have the, the, the full refreshes uh, come to us uh, in cabinet um, to uh, to endorse the the main uh, three year overarching <coughs> plan so um, the recommendations are that uh, we endorse the Tamworth Community Safety Plan 2022 refresh um, as recommended by ISAG approve the recommendation from the scrutiny committee that cabinet continue to endorse the main three-year overarching plan only from 2023 following review by scrutiny approve delegation to the infrastructure safety and growth scrutiny committee to review and endorse the annual refresh of the community safety plan from 2024 with the assistant director of partnerships and i don't know whether you want to come in and say anything on that uh, i think that's correct thanks to councillor summers yeah so. okay thank so you i'd like to move those mm -hmm. to Okay, any questions or comments? Councillor Doyle. I'd just like to say that, uh, that I think Martin's doing an excellent job. I was actually there at that scrutiny meeting and it, it's quite a difficult thing to get across to both members and the public that although we play a very important part in the relationships and partnerships, we don't actually carry out the enforcement and sometimes that's very difficult for people to accept. Uh, but yeah, like I says, I thought you'd done a really good job, uh, and Joe. <laughs> you both. It's a very difficult one to get across, and I thought that they did it very, very well. And it was good to see it from my own perspective, uh, where previously I've been the one delivering it, watching somebody else deliver it. <laughs> but yeah, well done. Uh, I'd just like to echo that, Joe. It is important for everybody to, um, you know, members and 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 Tamworthians to remember that the council can only do so much in, in getting partners to you know do what we would hope of them um, that it's very much uh, often we're in a place where we're, we're requesting and asking nicely we're not telling them to do anything we can't tell them to do anything especially the police they have their own or they have their own priorities they are an organization in their own right so um, I, I echo that fully that you know we're, we're not um, we're in no position to be able to tell them what to do but you know that's the whole point of working together in partnership and, and having documents such as this to to ha highlight how we are going to work together okay no thank you both any further questions or comments um in terms of the third recommendation uh, approved delegation to isag uh, to review and endorse uh, the the annual refresh uh, I understand that it's within their statutory duty uh, as a scrutiny committee to review uh, the refresh of the community safety plan anyway. In terms of the endorsement, surely if there are any recommendations coming out of that review, they still need to happen at Cabinet rather than scrutiny having a decision-making role? Uh, yes, Chair. They... they um it's the interim refreshes that they're going to they're just going to refresh and review they're not uh, they will highlight any changes in fact i think the recommendation as it was uh, they dropped one of them didn't they that said um that they would um by default push things to cabinet um they don't need to they already can push things to cabinet they're not making any decisions themselves they are going to highlight any changes to cabinet for us to to consider so so with with bearing that in mind i'm just concerned about the words approved delegation to should that not be a uh, note that ISAG will complete these reviews because we're not delegating any power to them that sits outside of their current role or, or statutory power uh, Andrew Barrett Chair, if, if it's helpful to Cabinet maybe a, a tweak to the amendment um, just to ensure that infrastructure safety and growth scrutiny review and endorse uh, it is part of their remit already um, but that would just make it clear as to uh, to, to uh, outline that as a uh, as a suggestion thanks I'd, I'd be happy with that councillor summers are you happy with that uh yes i mean i i totally understood where the 
recommendation was coming from, but being highlighted in such a way, yeah, totally understand the need for amendment. So, yeah, happy to move it as amended. Okay. Do we have a seconder? I think Councillor Dawes seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, and your comments about telling the police what to do feature brilliantly in the next report, which is Antisocial Behaviour, Crime and Policing Act 2014, PSPO consideration. Thank you. This is an easy one. This is basically um, what we used to call gating order. So uh, it's for land at the back of Mercy and Close. It's already, uh, well, it's not it, not even our land. It's network rails. They're quite happy for us to, uh, to, to gate it off to avoid uh, trespassing and um, to uh, avoid the... the litter that's being dumped there um, so really just to to prevent that we we want to uh, put forward uh, a PSPO um, for and uh, we uh, the the land running behind 1 to 35 Mercy close specifically the public right of way Tamworth 25 that runs from it number 11 to 35 to number 35 so it's just a simple one uh, chair for us to endorse I'd move that okay any questions or comments that's been moved. Do I have a seconder? Everyone seconded. All those in favour? Just, just pick one, Tracy. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that brings us on to item nine, which is the Future High Street Fund uh, update. Uh, the report has been circulated, and uh, as it stands, I'll give a very quick update on the different elements of Future High Street Fund. So the co-op building... Uh, has now been acquired uh, by Tamworth Borough Council uh, and is now in our ownership and control. That took place on the 4th of March uh, and that was really the first big step in terms of expenditure uh, and progress on the uh, on the physical bit of uh, a future high street fund. Um, so what will now happen is we'll be working with the college uh, to ensure that their part of the project comes forward uh, and they, we can get on with knocking down the existing 1960s elements of the co-op building uh, whilst keeping the front bit, uh, the interesting bit on Coal Hill uh, for a future enterprise centre. Uh, middle Entry, uh, we now have uh, reached agreements with the owners of Middle Entry for vacant possession uh, and that means the elements of Middle Entry that we'll be taking on uh, towards the back of the town hall uh, and around the corner uh, will uh, will come our way as vacant in June this year uh, so we'll be able to start uh, preparing some planning submissions uh, for for the demolition and redesign of that area. Uh, St Otha Square work continues on designing uh, the square and the public realm components. Uh, this is something that will come towards the end of the project once we've done some of the uh, some of the big builds uh, but it's something we need to be aware of now and start planning. Uh, and the final one of the big projects or elements of the projects is around the Castle Gateway uh, and opening up uh, that with uh, the removal of the nationwide building, a wider bridge uh, and bringing people between the Castle Grounds and Market Street. Uh, so discussions have been held with the nationwide uh, and their structural uh, requirements for, for the fit out of the Peel Cafe. Uh, there's some ongoing issues uh, which are highlighted in the report. Uh, however, we uh, we are confident uh, that we've overcome those uh, and the Nationwide are currently looking at plans as to how they can move into the Peel Cafe across the road uh, and we also have some uh, good progress in terms of engagement and discussions with the occupiers of the properties on Market Street that are in question. Uh, in terms of engagement, uh, we now have a monthly uh, session with, the, uh, uh, with businesses in the town centre uh, they're on the, the, the second Wednesday uh, of each month and that's a drop-in session for any businesses who want to have some advice or support or guidance as to where we're at with the project. Uh, and for those who are eagle-eyed, you'll notice we've put some new signage up in 27 Market Street, which gives you a link to the Transforming Tamworth website. Uh, that's a live website where we disseminate most of our information from uh, as, as the project goes along, so all the big milestones will be on that website. Um, everything else is covered in the report. It's here for Cabinet to note. Does anybody have any questions or comments on Future High Street Fund at this point? Councillor Pritchard. 
I think just to reiterate how fantastic the project is, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on and there's a lot being um, juggled and balanced and there's a lot of stakeholder engagement going on, but at the end of the day, this is a, a fantastic redevelopment of the town centre and, and a once in a generation opportunity. Okay, thank you. Uh, I move that Cabinet accepts that report. Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. I don't know why I looked over there. Uh, that brings us on to item 10, which is the exclusion of press and public, uh, and that's in accordance with the provisions of the Local Authorities Executive Arrangements Meeting and Accessing Information England Regulations 2012 and Section 100 and 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded for the meeting during the considering of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure <coughs> of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 part 1 of schedule 12A of, to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I so move. Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. To leave and can I ask for the cameras to be switched off?